we're back with more BSL. Thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight. We've got hundreds of people uh, dedicating their time to this and also all of you guys in chat. So uh, welcome back, I'm Rapid with Nyokin. We just watched Bonneth just go total beast mode, um, but it didn't look like that. So it's still actually a pretty exciting series because it started off with Gorinich like stomping Bonnet. Like that was like, oh, that looked like bad. And then Bonnet's like, wait a second, I'm just going in. So um, very dominant, but now we're moving on to a whole new series. And this one might be even closer. Yeah, now we've got a more balanced, or actually it's the other series was still balanced. It was still 7.30, you know, according to Team Liquid. Whereas True Touch, Terror, I think, was like, if we're looking at the Liquipedia stats, it's like 55-45 yeah. or something like that. Even. Yeah, for Terror. And, you know, maybe it's Terror's time. And mm -hmm. we I was looking at chat just now. Some people want Terror to make it out so they can finally see something other than Bonnet's True Touch. In yeah, the by some people you mean, uh, the Spanish-speaking Latin American community, and Bob Malcolm, who uh, I am told uh, by him the other week, uh, has something special prepared for us if Terror makes it to the finals. So I'm not putting words in his mouth, maybe a little bit, but uh, a lot of passion behind Terror right now. And uh, what Bonneth reminded us of in that interview is that this is a rematch of the semifinals of Corrupted Cup, where obviously uh, Terror and True Touch uh, met and it uh, maybe did not go his way. So um, I'm excited to find out where their power levels are relatively because for True Touch, I don't think I've seen him like break a sweat this BSL. His round of 16 looked effortless. His round of eight looked effortless. Uh, yeah, it doesn't get much better than the way True Touch is playing right now. Yeah, and we haven't seen Terror go up against a Zerg in quite a while. I don't think, I think we saw like, well, okay, we saw him play versus Crossy. Actually, Terror should have been eliminated because of that four pool oh, game. You're right. Like he was within seconds Ooh. of being eliminated if he didn't get that Marine out. Mm -hmm. So luckily he makes it through. But other than that, we've really seen him just play Terran versus Terran or Terran versus Protoss. So not really too sure of his current Terran versus Zerg. But with that said, what did True Touch have to deal with? He dealt with ZVZ versus Ziki. I don't think he's played versus Terran either. If he did, it was very few games versus Terran. He, yeah, yeah, he played Ziki and TT1 and won the games and got into the round of eight where he played DeWalt and lost one time and then crushed him three times. Around, so. Yeah, so we're not too sure of his current Zerg versus Terran state. Of course, it's going to be very good because if we look at the profile, he's got like a 65% win rate versus Terran. But what Terror has going for him is there's not a lot of Terrans on the ladder in general, but there's definitely not a lot of Terrans that play like Terror because he has all types of builds to throw at you. Oh yeah, this guy's going like 1-1-1. One, one, one. He's going uh, Rax Expand, maybe a cheeky uh, 14cc. Eight racks you got to watch out for. He is 100% going to drop that on you at least once. Uh, but he brings a lot that no other Terran player does. Uh, he also understands the subtle, finer nuances, the uh, the the art form that is playing uh, StarCraft One from Peru. Uh, so I don't know what's going to happen. We are broadcasting these games from replays due to the somewhat significant latency of these games. Who knows if that'll play into account? But it's going to be a series like no other. Um, and uh, like I said, these guys have played before each other, uh, against each other, but they actually go way back. We were looking at some of these stats. If you guys don't know about this, it's a new feature on Liquipedia. If you want to find out more info about these players and their head-to-head, they actually have a matchup section. So if you go to any uh, like Liquipedia bracket, you can actually select any matchup and see the history of these players playing against each other. And we were looking that up for uh, our semifinalists. And it was really cool because back in like 2011, 2012, we're talking the end of the previous era of Brood War, uh, right when Pro League and kind of all that is phasing out, uh, Terror was dominating True Touch. 2011, never lost against him. 2012, the same thing again. 2013, it gets a little bit more even. And then for many years, they don't play each other until we start coming back 2017, 18, 19. We're talking remastered here and True Touch basically dominates it's pretty even for a while but this last year 2020 they played so many times and true touch is kind of crushing it yeah well true touch there's a reason he's the king of bsl right so he's just a killer so i'm ready for these games because this is the matchup that i've been waiting for can terror 
get some redemption here, or is it going to be True Touch making it to another finals of PSL? Somebody stop this bad, bad man. The map is match point, and that's going to be game number one for our best of five series. This is our second final best of five semifinals to find out the final player uh, that is going to advance on to the grand finals to face off against Bonnet. So without further ado, let's get it started. Our map is match point, and we are going to get into game one, semifinal number two. Okay, all right, here we go in the bottom left-hand corner in the pink, playing Zer from Poland. This is True Touch. And in the top right, representing our Terran, it is Terror. So match point, a new ladder map, I think was in a previous ladder also. Honestly, all the ladder maps this season are really good. Yeah, really good. This is the first time where I looked at it and I was like, you know, I don't have to veto anything. You know, there are some <laughs> that were just instant vetoes, but this was actually a, a pretty good map. It's a two player map. You know, you see a lot of epic games on here. My favorite game of all time. Now this is an eight racks coming in for Terra, but oh, my yeah? favorite game of all time on match point, it's not even a Terran versus anything. It's a ZVZ, Jadong versus Yellow. Yes, you heard that right. The Yellow, where he goes for a tactic you never see, which is Burrowed Plague in one of the most what? epic ZVCs I've what? ever seen. So if you have not seen that game, highly recommend it. Now, Terror, okay, it's not an eight rex. He's actually just skirting around the Overlord. He's gonna go for an eBay block at the natural. Oh, but the Overlord sees it. So unfortunately, Terror didn't go to the very edge of the map. So now probably true to, okay, actually he's gonna pull two drones to deny this SCD. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously that's a lot of lost mining time, so somewhat mission accomplished, but uh, it's, oh, eBay block, nice. Two more drones, this is so much lost mining time, oh my God. Yeah, a lot of lost mining time to pull four drones like this, but I guess he really wants to get his hatchery down here. Now, I am a little bit surprised he didn't just, oh, we can't lose the SCV, because then we're gonna be in the dark, just like we're playing Protoss. You know, a lot of players these days end up just going for 12 bullets. It's a super strong build. It is an option that True Touch could have gone for, but his nat would have been delayed quite a while. So I guess he has decided that 12 hatch is the better build here. Now, what does Terror want to go for? I don't see gas coming down for him. Another SC SCV coming out. He's gonna turn the other one around because it took such a ridiculous amount of damage. And there we go, True Touch is going for two hatch. I already see gas taken at his main. Uh, yeah, so he's going two hatch right now. I, I think you pretty much expect mutas coming out of this. It doesn't have to be. And that's why scouting is so important. So I flash like always has like an extra SCV out on the map trying to get this info through. Uh, and that's what you see coming into the natural right now. There's an SCV just waiting to run in there and confirm exactly what's going on. So we saw Flash go for a lot of delayed mech builds in the last ASL. So is that something that Terror is gonna pull out? It is definitely in his arsenal, 100% it's in his arsenal, but I don't think we're gonna see that from him. If we are, he needs to get a gas down pretty soon. He actually skipped his initial, SC, or initial Marine so he does have that option, but instead he's just going for the standard follow-up. It is two racks. Now Zerg players have gotten so good with their mutas, it's just absurd how good they are with, with them now. And match point is one of the few maps where it's actually a nightmare to deal with the mutas on the high ground. The natural is so easy to pick off SCVs with mutalists. Now we have seen more Lurker play follow-up, but I don't think I've ever seen True Touch go for that. So I don't think Terra really has to be worried about any potential massling Lurker, but he is going to oh, lose. Oh, okay, this is into the main for another full scout. That'd be huge. Scouting this lair is really, I think, all the information you need to know. Oh my God, the moving shot from the drone. He doesn't get it. The SEV jukes around and sees the lair on the way. Yeah, Lair is about to finish. He saw that there's no Hydroden, so there is not gonna be any Lurkers. Now, this is more of my type of two racks. It is standard refinery timing. It's about a four minute timing. He's gonna have Academy coming up pretty soon. There it is at the entrance. Now, this is a bit of a dangerous Academy. It's right Ooh. at the front. 
And if you get like range or stim picked off by whatever, yeah, there he'll have stim in time, but range generally isn't done by the time Muta's come out. So there is a potential threat to just lose the academy initially. Now, this is the hardest part for me about facing two hatch. What type of two hatch is it? Now we see at top left already a hatchery is going down. So this is going to be more econ based two hatch is not going to be all in, which is what Soma plays quite a lot. So if Terror takes any decent amount of damage at his main where he can't actually get out, this is going to be super econ for True Touch very quickly. Yeah, uh, well, let's see when the, uh, I mean, his fires are, are already almost uh, done. And that's when things start to get scary. The extra hatchery is like, you know, for a long time, you'd see like three hatch play and that'd be like, you know, just a proxy macro hatch. But uh, this one is on location in the upper left. And I mean, at Zerg, especially when you're going up against bio, you got to do a lot to control the bio ball and keep it back on his side uh, of the uh, the map. And I mean, I think True Touch can actually do that. He's got a lot of links kind of hiding up above, or I guess in this case below, uh, the natural expansion, trying to get as much information as our intrepid observer is showing. Uh, the scan sees the spire, but nothing else. Okay, so standard follow-up for True Touch. We've got Mutas with armor coming in. So in the past few months, it hasn't necessarily just been Guardian plate with armor. Almost every single Zerg I face is favoring armor regardless of whether they go Guardians. It's super strong. Mm -hmm. They take so little damage. Also, when you go two racks versus two hatch like this, a lot of times you can't afford stim and range and plus one. So there's a long period of time where you are plus zero versus plus one armor. So this is gonna be a really strong attack from True Touch, already yeah. picking off some SCVs building turrets, so annoying. Yeah, yeah, when you can't give those up. And it's also kind of hard to build the turrets around oh. the natural expansion here, but you're right, it's coming in. And we've got Evolution Chamber Rush for True Touch also. So this could be Battle Zerg, Mass Ling, Muta, Lurker, or he could already be planning for a fast hive, go into that fast ultralist play. Like I said, when you two racks, you do skip plus one for a long time. We do see that it has started, but it's matching carapace. So uh, already, True Touch is an amazing position al already with top left, and True Touch or Terror is still stuck in his base, building so many turrets also. I'm a little bit sad that he didn't, you know, identify that vulnerable academy at the front. Uh, range is now done. Obviously, that's insanely uh, important to have against mutas, or well, actually everything, but specifically mutas here because they're the imminent threat. Uh, and they haven't really done that much damage. It's been a little bit annoying, but finally they're trying to pick off a few Marines to get that done. But keeping this bio ball back is almost their full-time job. And they're not doing it. That bio oh, ball is almost halfway across the map. Terror is taking so much damage. He's down workers. He's, so one of the things that you need to do when you're going for uh, playing versus two hatch is you've got to get out your tech relatively quickly. Oh, it almost intercepts the Mutus there. But we see that Terror, still no factory yet. So he's way behind in terms of tech versus two hatch. Really something like a 6.30 or seven minute timing is good timing for the factory, but we're way past that now. So really True Touch is in just an amazing position. Hive has already started. Yeah, like this is actually just, oh, actually factory's already done. So we were just missing. Okay, so actually, actually Terra's oh, 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 okay. He just needs to get his starport and science facility going. But I am worried that the drone and SCV count is so similar because usually that's a bad sign for Terran. Uh, yeah, um, I mean, obviously, depending on the strategy, it might vary a little bit, but in general, Terran uh -oh. wants to be uh, up a little bit. Nice. Oh, if he can get this, where's the stim? I was a little bit worried there. No medics there, so he's gonna have to turn around. And that isolates this army at the top side of the map. And we know that these Lings and Mutas are gonna have plus one armor pretty soon. So they can fight this straight up. Terra scans, sees there's a sunken already. He's gonna stim for it anyways, but this is gonna be a lost army. It's all about how much damage can he actually deal. And these medics have no energy. Yeah, they have no energy. They are doing a good job blocking kind of for the Zerglings, but it's not like a block against an Ultra. Oh my gosh. Uh, it just all dies. So actually complete tragedy. Uh, that was a that was a one way trip there. There was no saving any Ryan's private Ryan, whatever the name of the movie is. They all died. So now it's a whole bunch of mutas and a whole not bunch of Marines.
Yeah, Greater Spire coming in for Zerg also. I always love Greater Spire whenever you can go for it with a like five mutilus left over because it's going to force out a radiates and that's going to be energy that cannot be used on these ultralists that we see coming in and that is what's coming in oh yeah for true touch we knew it was going to be when he was rushing it's the greater spire set. too yeah. and that means guardians ultras bears oh my it's just going to be insanity hive tech but you have to keep the pressure on behind this because while all this is happening you're not really building a whole lot and so as i was saying with the upgrades look at our eBay, is it blinking for plus two? I don't see it just yet. Meanwhile, Zerg has already started plus two armor. And let me tell you, Rapid, plus one weapon versus plus four ultras, that doesn't go over very well, generally, for Terran, unless they have five million Marines. So Terror is in a world of hurt unless he starts plus two very soon or gets some type of magic damage done to top left or a drop. A drop would be amazing because if we look at the actual vision on the bottom side of the map, it's non-existent, but he can't afford to go for drops. Why? Because we've got guardians morphing over his <laughs> oh natural. Oh my God. Yeah, he has absolutely no way to deal with that. What are you gonna do? Irradiate each one of those? I think not. Uh, and I mean, what do you have to deal with that? It's just irradiate right now, right? He's got Wraith with Cloak coming out. Actually, three Starport Oh my Wraith. God. Now, this could actually catch True Touch off guard because he didn't go for Defilers or he doesn't even have a Hydrogen. If he kills these Guardians and just goes to the main and kills Drones, that would be a way to get him back into this game. Now, hopefully that's a Devourer coming out of that last egg because if there's- Oh, it is. Okay, yeah. now he at least has something to deal with. Oh, oh we've got to unstack the Guardians. Oh, it's such a painful split. They're so slow, oh my God. And they're running into Marines, yikes. Um, okay, he, he did split them in the end. Four still alive, well, I guess five, not for long. That went as well as possible for Terror. Holy moly, all of these Guardians are super low. Sure, he's not mining at the natural for a while, but that's about as, well as he could have asked for. He's not repairing the CC. He might actually lose that now. Here come the raids. He's going to snipe one. But if he loses the rest, that's actual Cloak. tragedy. Cloak comes through. The Overlord's slow, so it does have to get in range. To... Oh, he oh. scourges the command center to kill it at the last second. No repair from those lazy SCVs, and that is a huge victory so for sure, Jess. So now, what does Terra do now? He's going to rebuild his CC at the Nat, but his econ is severely hindered. His army in the center of the map couldn't get anything done either at top left because there's sunken and lings and ultras up there. And the SCV unfortunately misses top middle. That's the only base he could actually kill. So a missed opportunity there. Yeah. And I see that armor is done for the ultras. So it's gonna be plus four versus plus one. I don't even see plus two started for terror. Oh no, this is going to be an absolute nightmare once these Ultras finally come out. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of raids, okay? And Ultras don't shoot up, okay? <laughs> Unless the Wraith pilot, like, flies comically low to the ground. Uh, I mean, eventually that'll be good, but there's a whole lot of tech here uh, for uh, True Touch. He's got uh, Swarm, he's got Plague, I think? Maybe not quite yet, because this is a like, super gas-intensive build, um, so it's hard to get gas for defilers and oh no way he gets that wow actually still hits with one scourge so it's a wounded vessel and it doesn't heal itself so let's see where terror is going he is going to die all the way up to the upper left hand corner and there is nidus right no. yeah he does have nidus up. yeah there is nidus there's like six ultras at the natural there's also a defiler terror is going to go for it. defensive matrix but i just don't think he has enough yeah, it's a uh, sunken or that's four by itself, almost just one shots the raise. Uh, a nice team matrix to bust up the ramp. These ultras are out and they are still incredibly tanky, but the bio just doesn't quit here. You can't fight that without Dark Swarm. Yeah, the angle not the greatest, just falling in, but oh, ultras from the back. Oh, sickest flank, big ultras swarming the uh, the bio down there on the ground. Cracklings on top of the ramp, ultras below. I don't know how many of those medics are making it back alive. Yeah, the whole army gets wiped for terror. There's so many ultralists left over. They're heavily upgraded. We see plague coming in, more lings and ultras being produced. There's just so much true touch. Terror, remember he lost his natural, so he has no econ really going for him. And yeah. this is just a matter of time until, oh, he's got a defiler and we don't have any irradiates. Look, there's no queen to infest it, so the moral victory uh, might still be ours, but anything else, like, like look at the upgrades. It's 4-0 uh, for True Touch, and Terror is still on plus one, I want to say. 
Yeah, it's plus one Terran. You can't fight ultras with plus one. It's fine. Not, <laughs> that was hard for me there. GG, that is gonna do it. Yeah, GG, true touch looking ridiculously strong. The mutas dealt a lot of damage Ooh. at the main. Or how many turrets were there? That was really what did it. He built so yeah. many turrets, had absolutely no army to do any type of damage to true touch. And this is why two hatch is so dangerous because you never know what it is. Is it yeah. all in? If you move out and it's all in, you lose your whole army. If you don't move out, they take a third hatch like that. I hate it, man. <laughs> I actually hate two hatch. Well, it's actually super rare that you see that, right? Most of the time, two hatch is just mutas, and then you like you move out with your fireball and you play that back and forth, whatever. Not this time. Really sick to see that ultra fast high tech. The guardians, I think, like the repair on, or the lack of repair on that natural expo. Like he scourged it to kill it. Like yeah. That was like the last second, like, oh my God, if I get this, it's worth it. If not, he the race switch actually like did a super good job, plus that sick irradiate, killing off all the guardians. And if you can keep your natural, kill off the guardians, then you actually have a lot of time to get the upgrades that you need to prepare for the ultras, which you're pretty sure are on the way, right? Yeah, but I mean, the plus two would have been way behind the Zergs, plus two. So I still think True Touch would have been in an amazing position, yeah. but. Regardless, Shutch is up 1-0. So now the question is, is what is Terra's response going to be? Because I have a feeling we're going to see two hatch every single game. That's current meta these days. There's no reason to change it. And we know Terra likes to play all types of builds. So I wonder if we're going to see mech. But I'm thinking back to what actually cost him the game in that last BSL where he lost 3-2. It was when he went for mech. I yeah. Think. So I don't know. Well, that's the thing about Terra. Sometimes when a build stops working for him, he'll switch it out to another one. And maybe the better decision is to just keep playing and kind of shore up your defenses where you need to. I don't know, but we're going to find out as we get into our second game in this best of five. It's on La Mancha. So we've got those heartbreak ridgy ridges on the, uh, the windmill in the middle. And uh, I was going to make some pun on... Uh, uh, Rodrigo Campos, but there's actually no character in Don Quixote that matches any of that. So I'm going to leave the Espanol memes out of here and just get into the next game in the series. It's a big four player map, so we're going to start things, or we're going to continue things for game number two uh, on La Mancha and see if Terror can bring it back. In the top left, in our magenta, it is the Terran player, Terror. And his opponent in uh, the pink, in the bottom left-hand corner, uh, is True Touch, who is currently up 1-0. Yeah, so La Mancha, one of my favorite maps, even though every Terran player I talk to says they hate this map. The reason I like it is you can wall the net. You know, I always talk about it. It's what Terra went for versus Crossy, who four pulled and then yeah. failed the four pull <laughs> somehow. He should have won that game. Yes. I'm still upset he about it. He should have won that game. But, you know, it happens sometimes. So I wonder if Terra is going to wall again. He's already shown the wall on this map. So, oh, there goes that SCV. So this is my preferred opener. Now, whether you mech or not is irrelevant. The wall is amazing because Zerg's in the dark. They don't know whether you expanded. They don't know what you're whether you went gas, whether you're going mech, whether you're going, you know, uh, standard bio play. Now, luckily for True Touch, he's in BSL. That means you first scout every single time. So he's gonna be able to overlook that natural. <laughs> now all he has to do is just look at the timing of the command center to figure out whether it's actually a gas or just standard CC opener. Well, you can't win them all. Um, you, I, I just wanna see where the first scout for, uh, for terror goes. That's, that's, the, that's the real mystery to me. It's like, how, how good are our map hacks here? Uh, well, I guess we'll see any second now. But the natural expansion should be coming down He's right about the bottom middle. now. It's good. Yeah, bottom left. So there he goes. He's going to see the Overlord. So both players are going to get a first scout off. And I'm still paying close attention to the gas of Terra. We still don't see it taken just yet. So it looks like we are going to have just a standard expansion coming in. Now, he has learned from last time Look at that SCV come out. He, that's going to be a depot very quickly. 
Oh, well, it's in position. He just wants to confirm yeah. whether it's a hatch or not. And then he sends it back. So he's, he's learned from the Crossy game mm -hmm. that if there is an early pool, we need that deep up in time. Now, again, two hatch play from True Touch. This is really fast compared to what we were seeing two or, or one year ago. It's about a 205 gas. This was what we saw last game, too. So this doesn't necessarily mean he's all in with it. We'll have to see whether he wants to take bottom right or what he wants to do. Is it going to be Ling Lurker? I see a lot of players Ling Lurker into it. And in my mind, I'm like, dude, I got a wall. But they still go for it. And a lot of times, I'm already skimping on units. So that could be a viable option. Yeah, yeah. If they touch. can catch you with your pants down like that, that is a, a suboptimal. Uh, well, there's the depot you were talking about. Uh, I'm glad that he did go for the safety block earlier. Uh, here's, here's my story about that safety block with the SCB, right? When you're not sure and you've got that vulnerable time, uh, I was watching Artosis play in the qualifiers for uh, ASL a couple years ago. And uh, he does that same thing where he like pulls the SCB just in case there's anything crazy. And he scouts that in fact it is like a super early pool and there's lings on the way. So he goes back to his main. He pulls like five SCBs to block the hole because he can't build the, the depot in time. <laughs> the lings get there and the SCBs glitch against each other in the block and the lings just <laughs> <laughs> so funny. I mean, obviously, it's a little heartbreaking, but so funny. Yeah, but that's like such an artosis thing. Oh, like, yeah, no, of course. It's, it's got to be. It's only one way. I think I actually had that moment recorded one time in my, like, esports, like, I don't know, room of requirement or something. I'll pull it out one of these days, but actually insane. So all moral of the story is I'm glad Terror did it. There's no cheese here, so he's safe and sound. We don't have to relive that terrible, painful moment. So this is one of the powers of the wall is we do see Terra has gone for relatively fast gas, but it's not for mech. It is for super fast plus one weapon. And we saw Casper do this on Escalade in the earlier rounds, but with no wall. He was just so greedy with it. So this is most likely gonna be three, four or five barracks follow up. It depends Ooh. on how risky Terra wants to go for. Now I've seen Piano actually use something like this where he even skipped building turrets. He had the eBay, but built no turrets. Wait, how do you? It, well, what, Mutas what? moved across the map and he just countered. <laughs> so that is also a potential option here, but I think we're just gonna see four or five barracks. If you can get four barracks with plus one versus two hatch, it's ridiculously strong. And I am looking at Terra or True Touches opener we don't see a drone out in the map, so it is not three hatch. It is, I guess, going to be, is it all in Ling Muta? Or is that a third hatch at his nat? It looks like it may have been placed there because, again, one of the powers of this opener yep. is you don't know if it's mech. If it's mech and vultures run in, well, hey, you're dead. So the hatch is actually a defensive play versus mech, but it doesn't help him versus Terra's opener this time. Yeah, I, I mean, it's not like he could could have necessarily foreseen that, but you're right. Uh, first scan goes off, scans an at, sees the second hatchery there, and the spire popping. So, I mean, that's about the, this is exactly the information you're looking for, right? Everything is going amazing for Terra. For like, for some reason, True Touch is feeling a lot of pressure because he's built two sunken. The first one, understandable. This looks like mech play. Mm -hmm. The hatchery, understandable. But the second sunken, very very iffy and he does not need it right now what does course, that even defend against it, it would defend against a fast two rex which is what we see a lot of players do actually a lot these days they rush the academy really quickly and they're on your doorstep like 20 seconds faster than usual so this was definitely planned for that now terra sees that it is three hatch mutas so that means there can't be another base hidden out on the map so if i was terra in this position I would feel like I got the dream scenario. I'm about to have plus one. It's so close to being done. Range is almost done. The only thing that's lacking right now is there's not a lot of Marines. So we got to make sure we don't bleed out Marines here. And other than that, everything is going perfectly Ooh. for him. A lot of damage on those mutas from just a couple turrets. So even though they are able to get all the this way in the main, uh, you got to be careful because now A, you have to do damage, and B, you have to get out of there when this giant bio ball heads out onto the map. Yeah, and this is what I was saying. Now, even though Terra built turrets, it's, oh, he finds a free Muta and Scourge in the center of the map, and True Touch, he's scrambling to defend this because he can't get his Mutas out. Yeah, well, that's the thing. It's like, you got them in there. Oh no, you can deal damage now, but uh-oh, how do you do anything with the Mutas? Like, they kill every SCV, so what if you get your Sunken's busted? Well, 
Actually, this game is going to get crazy because the, uh -oh. I don't think he has enough to bust through the Sunkins. And True Touch has eliminated mining in the main. So he hasn't killed that many SCVs, but they're not mining very well. So, wow, man, Terra's just rallying oh, across the map. He's going for it. He's going for it. He's going for it. He's stimming in right now. There's SCVs going down. He pops one Sunkin. He's going to go actually deeper to try to target down the next two. He's going to get another one. The Spitans are continuing to pop oh. out. Oh, the, 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 the uh, drones drill in. Two Sunkins go down. There's one more left. They're targeting down the drones. The sunken in the back is dropping lower. It pops out. The Muta single digits can't do anything. They finally fly back, but they're still very damaged. The Marines abide. There's just such low numbers of units for both players, but so much damage being done by Terror. He's going to focus down the Spire. Yeah, that's it. There's no drones at the net either, and True Touch taps out. So Terror with an amazing timing right there. And that definitely caught True Touch off guard because you could tell hatch replacement, double sunken. He really thought it was mech. And this is why Terror is so dangerous. He shows you something, it's completely different. Yeah, it's, you don't know. You have no idea. This is why he's so dangerous. And now, series is tied up 1 1. Terror's going to be feeling really good about that. You always feel really good when you mind game someone that hard. Like, oh man, that feels great. So, 1 1 series. Damn. So close. Um, and, uh, you know, we don't know the series. It's just played live with the previous game. So it's basically live due to latency issues. We kind of had to do it with replays. But uh, the series is hot off the presses. Uh, when we started this, I, I mean, these players uh, are, are playing, like, I want to say better than ever. I mean, they've already obviously made it to the semifinals. So I'm hoping we go the distance. That's all I'm trying to say. Next map is... Escalade, thank you. It's waiting for our intrepid producer behind the scenes, Zero, to let me know because I forgot when he told me earlier. So it's Escalade, a uh, fantastic car brand of rich people everywhere around the world and a great StarCraft uh, map. It reminds me a little bit of Clayfields, you know, with those little uh, nodules yes, out a there. Bit. Uh, obviously much different because it has like the it's a little bit like a, a combo because you get kind of the windmill pattern of the low ground, high ground around the middle of the map. Obviously, it's much more open. There's not that choke point, whatever. It's a different map, surprise. Uh, and that's our next one coming up. Uh, so let's get into it. This is game number three. The series is tied up at one to one. Find out which player can pull ahead to get into our next game. So in the bottom left, in the pink, we have our Zerg player from Poland. It is True Touch. And in uh, the bottom right, in the magenta, which I believe is also somewhat pink, uh, is our uh, Peruvian Terror, Terran Player Terror, uh, whose name is just made to confuse me. But uh, he brought it back. It's so hard to do in series uh, when you, especially if you have like a, a specific style and it just gets slapped down. But we saw Bonneth turn it around after a game one loss in the last series and just win three games in a row. Yeah, and bottom right or Escalade is another good map to go for a wall. And that's what we see yep. SCV moving out. Luckily for True Touch again, he's gonna be able to scout it quickly. So we'll have to see, is this going to be mech? Is this going to be the same thing Terror just threw at him, which was the four racks plus one? Four racks plus one versus two hatch is ridiculously strong since you get all your upgrades. You can see why it's so strong and why walling on maps like that is so good. If it goes unpunished, you've got a crazy counter to two hatch. And also if the Zerg ends up thinking it's mech and reacts like True Touch does, where they don't have a third base, they don't have a third gas, the hatchery was like really not helpful for him other than building drones. So there's other factors going for you for this wall. So we'll have to see how True Touch responds here. You know, some players like Jadong, as soon as they see this wall, it's Hydra time. Oh, we're going range Hydra. So yeah. that might be the answer that True Touch needs. I love when you also like, uh, uh, well, who is it? Larva used to do this for a while where he would, uh, he would go range first before speed so that the uh any scouting information you like if you scan the hydras they're still slow so you can't tell if it's a rush or not um I, there's other ways to tell so it's not very common at all but 
still kind of a cool little mind, micro mind game because that wall is bustable for sure. Uh, but you don't actually see very many players go for it. Yes, yeah, so we do see the standard opener for True Touch again. Two oh five gas. Drone is going to be annoying on this wall, but not going to find any success here. SCV, he's not Artosis, so it doesn't end up on the other oh, yeah, side no, of the of wall. Not. If it was Artosis, it probably also gets sniped somehow. So <laughs> nicely done from Terra so far. Now, this is really what I'm watching for, is what does True Touch do to prevent Terra from just getting away with the four racks? I think the Hydrogen would be awesome because even if you see it, it is honestly not easy to stop you're also going to lose two depots for free because you just flat out can't range it even with the bunker so we'll see if that is what true touch goes for again fast gas for terror 18 gas coming down so everything does look just like plus one but this could also be delayed mech which is what flash pulled out quite a few times in asl yeah, and this is something that Terror also kind of tried to do, where he would like bio one game and kind of swap it up uh, to mech. And it's not like his mech is bad, but I think it does oh. take a little bit of the pressure off uh, of, uh, of True Touch. Wow, getting in for a scout right now. This is exactly what he did in the last game. Perfect timing to see the lair coming up. He's actually going to keep this SCB alive for a while. Yeah, eBay's going up for Terror, so it's the same build. And like you were saying, where he does switch it up a lot, I like Terra going for it again, because I think if you think like, okay, I showed it one time, so this guy's gonna think that I'm not gonna do it again. So going for it again, I think is the move this time. So we'll see what True Touch will do differently versus the same build. Now, luckily for True Touch this time, he's reading it properly. You cannot have a command center this fast and be going back. So no sunken at his entrance, no third hatch at his entrance. So everything so far is much better than last game. There's the Spire. And oh. everything is, oh, actually the Academy is super fast for Terra this time. This is that two racks. Oh, it's just one racks actually. Just oh nonstop Marines, super fast Academy now, this actually. This is so fast. He's gonna have- This is so many links. Yeah, so, I mean, he, this is just like a perfect read. This is the type of play where you're like, dude, I have a wall. Why are you mass linging? But he can't repair it in time. Yeah. Instant reaction. He's pulling the SCVs, but there's only two repairing the bunker or the, the depot oh. is getting focused down. Repair ain't that good. And now the link flood in with only one Marine. Another one pops out at the 11th hour, but the SCVs are starting to pop one by one. They're very, very limited. And the, uh, the assassin links coming around the back to pop the only remaining Marine. You can't repair a depot in uh, production and it's just gonna get taken down again before SCVs start to fall. Can they protect this G.I. Joe Marine? It's up to him to win the game. Is he the real Terran hero? Uh, I mean, maybe. It doesn't look like it. The Ling's coming back in. He's not firing. He's only got one gun. It's running out of bullets. He's trying to stim away, but he goes down again. The Ling lives with one health. It pops to an STV, but the deep, or the uh, depot is still unbuilt. Goes down again. The Ling flood get in. In. And there's nothing here to defend for terror. Bob Malcolm crying tears of Peruvian sadness. It is not looking good for our Terran hero. No, and even if terror holds to the links, the mutas are popping. So fireback comes out, doesn't hit air. Like, <laughs> so this is gonna be two one for true touch. And now terrors, you know, one game away from being eliminated. He also lost his racks. Oops. So he's got to rebuild that. He only has one racks production so far. The one Marine goes down. Oh God, down. watch this one wing. Yeah, here, here's a Muta, uh, a, a second Muta coming through and there, uh, there is nothing that shoots up right now. This is uh, Terror taking a walk around his room, getting a drink of water, coming back to the PC. Oh, still losing the game. It's time and damn, that's GG. Yeah, so True Touch decided that, hey man, you ain't gonna build units. Well, I'm just gonna surround your depot. And mm -hmm. as a Terran player, when somebody does that to me, oh, I wanna kill this guy. So <laughs> that might've actually been a mistake from True Touch, because now I think Terror might turn it on, but also at the same time, it's kind of a depressing loss to lose <laughs> like that. Oh. So it just depends. I don't know, like for me, I really want to kill this Zerg now. And that, but... I mean, that's one of the worst ways to lose, yes. right? When you're trying to cut, like not even a corner, but just like a tiny little slice off the block of the, 
he had an instant reaction of the SCVs too. Like yeah. it was actually a really good reaction. Like as soon as he saw Link's instant pull, the problem is, is well, on he didn't that have another barrier. So. Yeah, yeah. On that position, the Links get more surface area than your SCVs get to repair. Oof. That's what sucks about it. So the Links. Oh my gosh, I'm not even gonna talk about. It. Yeah. I hate losing. Anyway, like that. anyway, we're just, that game exists only to trigger Nyokin, and also to bring us to our next game in the series. And while it was evened up before, now no longer back and forth series. Literally, True Touch up to one, and now it's up to Terror once again to try to find a way to bring it back. Um, will we see more than one barracks this game? Will we see that one barracks be built on eight supply? <laughs> Who knows? Uh, it's gonna be exciting to watch, and our next map coming up is Silphid. Uh, this is the way we started game number one of our somewhat anomalous last series. It's the way we're going to, uh, I guess, potentially finish this. If True Touch wins this game, he will advance on to face his Polish brother, uh, Bonneth, in the grand finals. If not, we got a series on our hands. It's going to be so exciting. So without further ado, let's get into it. The map is Silphid, and this is game number four to, four to figure out which player is going to, uh, or whether or not Terror can hang on, take us to a game five or a true touch, We're going to advance on uh, to the grand finals. So in the top middle, in the magenta, he is on the brink of elimination. He needs Bob Malcolm's energy for sure. And the rest of chats, it is Terror. <laughs> That's right. Uh, we all have a little Bob Malcolm inside of ourselves. All right, so yeah, terror es mi pastor, nada me faltará. You know, we gotta really believe in this guy. On the other side, a man who needs no belief or energy, it's True Touch, up 2-1 in the series. And honestly, like, look, I haven't seen this guy break a sweat. I uh, started going running lately uh, with uh, one of my Korean friends across the street from me. We're actually meeting up later on to go running again too. And look, I haven't been running in a while. And this guy is going every day. And so I get out there and it's like, hey man, nice to see you. Let's go running. He's like, yeah, everything's nice. And then we start running. He smokes me. Okay, so look, we're going to do better today, but it's one day at a time. And I say that only to say that Terror or that True Touch has kind of looked like my good old Korean friend Min Sung. He is, uh, he's, a, he's a speed racer. He's Sonic the Hedgehog. And Terror, he's got he's to step it up. And I don't mean the DDR game. Well, you know, I have watched a lot of games on our Tosa stream and he always hates top middle. And people are telling me that, you know, bio is almost impossible to play at top middle. Now, as someone who plays bio and mech quite often, I can tell you that if I'm yeah. losing the game, it's not because I played bio. It's because I'm they're just better or they play better. So if Terror also thinks that 12 is an impossible position, for bio, this could just already be a, a, a be a mech play yeah. for him. Oh, really? And True Touch, if he watches any of Scan's stream or Artosis' stream where they talk about how bio is just so hard to play on this map, if once he sees that he is top middle, he may already suspect that it is, is going to be mech. But as I say that, 12 has come and gone, so we don't have gas. We're not going to have a factory opener for him. So far, this looks very standard, but knowing Terror, this could be delayed mech, but Silphid with the open natural side, yeah, it's gonna be hard to try and wall and go for delayed mech. So I think that this just has to be two racks marine medic. I love the way that uh, True Touch won that last game because I mean that map was actually not that difficult to wall. It's just you know the amount of uh, marines there, but especially this one, he's already shown that if there's a hole in your wall, oh, he's he's absolutely coming for you, swiggity swooty. He's coming for that wall, and it's a uh, you know, obviously, uh, with a, not the fastest, but I'd be mean, almost uh, CC coming down. That wall, it won't be there for a while. Yeah, command center going up. We don't see any gas for Terra just yet, so he is not going to be rushing the plus one weapon like we saw on the previous two maps. It is standard two racks follow up. This is the safe way to play. The only question now is when does the refinery go up? Because if it goes up in the next 20 seconds, we've got the fast academy push that I've been seeing more often this, these days. If we see, there it is, 315 gas. So this is gonna be super fast Marine Medic. Now the drawback of this is we cut SCVs to get this out. So if it does no damage, we're in trouble. SCV goes down, 
we're in trouble. So we don't know, is this a Ling all in? This is the one map where you cannot put depots or a full wall at. So this is very dangerous. You can see Terra's probably gonna instant bunker now. Ling speed is halfway done. Oh, nope. Secondary SCV coming out to me. Wait, where's that bunker? He needs a bunker. I'm, is, yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for it. it. Like, look, you is, don't lose that last game this way and skimp on the bunker. Yeah, like if this is ladder, they probably already have speed cuts, <laughs> right? They're, they're already at your base. So uh, Terra's going to try and get a little bit greedy here. He's got no bunker. Mm. He at least has sent out the second SCV. So when he sees this drone pop, he's going to be feeling okay. It's all, it is only late. It is only drone so far. Now I do see a drone going out. Oh my gosh, this is an LZ gamer base at top left. No way. This is an LZ gamer no base. Way. There's no way this is getting scouted. Dude, didn't, didn't, was it true? Who did this previously? Jay Yoon does it, uh, LZ gamer does it. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, LZ gamer is the poster child for wacky hidden bases. Nice stop position or hold position on the drone to delay the de the scout coming in because every game, true, Terra gets this scout every game. Whoop, <laughs> whipping it back around to stop. That. So now no notice of what's going on in the main. This rescout is super important and he's not going to get it in time. Here we go, the move out, but the Link sees it. But we got to get a sunken down ASAP. And it has just started. Stim, how close? Ooh, it's not close to finishing. Well, I mean, it is, but it's not done right now where he can start simming across the map. If he yeah. had stimmed right now, he may have been able to make it in time. But now I think the Sunkens are actually going to get up. And look at this Heartbreaker yeah. running right by no the idea. hatchery. Oh, LZ Gamers. Well, Spirit look, it lives on. I mean, that hatchery still tosses in the case that takes a lot of uh, money, but he doesn't get here in time to stop the Sunkers from coming up. The Lynx, they surround the units, the Marines drop and pop, and they are out of there. Firebats coming in for moral support, but that's going to be about it. Can't focus down the medic, so maybe that's a moral victory. And the Firebats saved the day, but they're not Fire Batman. They can't kill everybody. Yeah, but you got it. Oh, he actually finds top no left. I way. can't even believe it. But Firebats How does he know? deal almost no damage <laughs> to hatcheries. Hey, there's Yudas, a Marine. Yudas are coming out, so this is going to be cleaned up. And if you're a Terror fan right now, you're feeling so bad because this is going to be a third base for free. Yudas are going to clean it up. There's no way Terror has a secondary follow-up to deny it anytime soon. Oh, man, it looks like True Touch is just in a, an, a, an amazing position to take our third game already. Terra has spent four or two rounds of production on four fire, but I can't help him at all. Mm. Yeah, if this were some sort of like Ling Muta and you've got those fire bats back at home, then maybe you hold on or whatever. But he's not going to kill the hatchery in a million billion years. He does also reset the medic count, which is huge because you kind of want that to build up so you don't, you just pump out Marines. But uh oh, now we've got a multitask on not four or five uh, barracks. It's gonna be hard to hold these units off. Yeah, there's just not that many Marines. There's only three racks. He does have range almost done, luckily for him. Refinery, that's gonna fall. Plus one weapon has started. Firebat has moved out, so maybe it can find success stimming the top left and get some drones. But with the refinery down, we're not mining gas anymore. He's gonna have to take his nap gas. It's gonna delay everything. Remember I was talking about how Versus two hatch play, you gotta have like a six thirty seven minute factory. Yeah. And we did see it on map, but we just didn't actually see it on the map. Mm -hmm. I time. can guarantee you, there's no factory this <laughs> time. I'm looking everywhere yeah. for it. So this is setting up to be a game for True Touch to lose. He's gonna have his hive. Well, or he may just all in. He's actually getting plus one damage. Oh my God. Yeah, you're right. I think he does kind of smell blood in the water right now. Obviously you bop the first move oh. out that hard. Oh, he's gonna kill a depot. Man, this is like getting revenge for every time like Protoss supply blocks and Corsairs. Yes, he, uh, he has no Marines. Like th this oh, is gonna get two free fire bad. Those are supposed to like stim into the natural. Yeah, they were supposed to try and get some drones at top left. And with three racks production, you lose your first round of units. It's gonna be so hard to actually ever get critical mass versus the Mutalis, especially when they're gonna have plus one pretty soon. So true touch in complete control of this game. I'd really like to see a drone cycle because the only way that I feel like he can actually throw this is he gets his mutus caught and then because we're all inning we just don't have any econ going with it. Yeah. So we would really like to see a few drones come out for him but other than that he's picking off turrets left and right he's killing marines left and right he's everywhere. Look at the, how few SCVs there are in the net. This is the one drawback of this build. No econ. Yeah there's a little bit of uh 
an anti-timing here for Truth Touch. He's going for plus one weapons on Mutas, but he's doing all of this without it. So maybe that means things only get better from here. But uh, you know, maybe waiting for that would have been the, the stronger, more potent play. As is, he's still getting insane shots. The Mutas is still alive and in great numbers. Uh, and there's no mining at the natural anymore. Yeah, the Nat isn't mining. True Judge has lost almost no Mutas. He's now disrupted the SCVs at the Nat. They've got five on gas. Everything going wrong for Terry. And this is two groups of Mutas now just jumping on these five yeah. turrets. I mean, he doesn't have any econ behind it. Because drones don't kill your opponent. He knows what does. It's Mutas, it's a lot of them. But actually, that's a lot of turrets to just fly over. And the Stim Marines coming in still push that Muta Ball back. Yeah, this is what I was kind of afraid of, is maybe the Marines can get off a good round of shots onto the Vitas. He eliminates a few of them, trades some turrets, but really Terra doesn't care about turrets that much. Refinery's gonna go down. I did see that the factory has finished, but I don't see any starports in production. These Mutas, they're just, oh, a starport is done, but we gotta get our science facility up pretty soon, but that's just never gonna happen. Yeah. Academy goes down, that's gonna be no more medics. We are, uh, we're gonna be oh. uneducated this game. No science for us allowed. Uh, I mean, the bio is still, I mean, potent -ish, Ooh, armory. but is armor, armory? Well, I think, I like... think this is actually a good follow-up. If it was armor, you know, armor just nullifies Valkyries ridiculous, yeah. but because it's weapon, if we can get three Valkyries, that could be the saving move okay. for Terror because Valkyries, when they don't have to deal with armored mutilus, actually just shred them so quickly. I mean, look, I, I believe, like, every the, somewhere out there kicks senses that there's going to be a Valkyrie oh, game, God. but I don't know if we're getting there, homie. Uh, uh, bust in the front. We got Ling, Mutas, Bears, oh my. Uh, nothing. Really good repair? Way. There's the cluster repair. The Muta count just, wait, is that really not enough to take the turret down? Are you kidding me? Disgusting. Ugh. Show me some of those puke emojis in chat. This is actually, okay, now now he's just bike it down in two shots. <laughs> nice. You all, yeah, almost had me there in the first half, but uh, ugh, injustice is served. We need to kill the last lone turret. And now it's just a few straggling Marines trying to keep Mutas at bay. Well, first Valkyrie's about to come, oh no. Mutas and Lynx just jump on top of these Marines. And there's just not enough Marines. So Terra's gonna have his natural breach and that's probably it. There's just too much, too yeah. much true trust. There's like 20 mutilists right there. Oh, uh, he's just not gonna let him. Oh, Valk is dealing a lot of damage. Those are very bruised mutilists. So much damage being done by one Valkyrie, it ends up surviving. But, I, wow, he lost like 12 mutilists there. But unfortunately for Terra, it just doesn't matter. There's only three racks production. He lost all of his Marines. If he even had like five Marines, it's probably all he needs to actually survive, but just not enough. And he is, well, another uh, Valkyrie is out. Okay, I mean, look, I believe, but, you know, not a lot. This is like he's, Christmas and Easter belief. He's trying to do that patrol, patrol micro backwards. It's so delicate. He's got to make sure he does not lose this Valkyrie. It's his only saving unit here. Uh, uh, well, I mean, he's doing a good job oh, keeping it alive. Well, Valkyries unfortunately don't shoot Lings. So this is gonna be a true touch is gonna eliminate Terror in the round of four. And he is gonna be moving on into the finals versus the Protoss King himself in Bonnet. Damn, uh, wow. That was so hard fought. I mean, even there at the end, Terror's just never giving up. Um, and I think the true victory is that we A, get an epic finals between Bonnet and true touch, which I think everybody wants to see and B, we get another sad, patriotic Bob Malcolm video cheering uh, Terror on there. Ooh, man, what a painful way to go because it looked like, like oh, he was doing such a good job, like clawing his way back into there. Such a back and forth series. But man, in the end, you can't, there needs to be some weird, can't touch this meme with true touch. Somebody make one of those. I don't even know. It's, uh, it's just crazy how strong he looks right now. Round of 16, untouchable, 4-0 out of his group. I didn't even know how strong he was. Round of eight, he loses one game to DeWalt, and we're like, wow, DeWalt's such a great, and then he stops him. So, uh, wow, what do you say about this? I mean, this is these are clearly the two best players this season. Yeah, True Touch just looks so strong, and Bonneth looked really good too, but, you know, Gordich looked phenomenal in the first game, so it doesn't 
it's not like Bonneth is untouchable here. So I think this is going to be a good series. I mean, if anybody can match the macro of Gornich, because Gornich has a ridiculous macro, yeah. honestly, it's going to be true touch. So I'm actually very excited to see the slugfest that we're going to see in the finals. It's going to be best of seven. They can't dodge Monte Cristo. Oh, yeah, that's right. We got to have a Monte Cristo they, game again. They can't dodge Whiteout, which has had every single one of our best games this series in BSL. So this best of seven coming up in our finals next week is going to be absolutely amazing. Yeah, man. I actually, when you mentioned that about Whiteout, I'm like, that game actually, or that map actually does give just the best games. That, was it? that was the game that uh, Marino versus Cryoc was on too, yes. right? Oh, so sick. I still think about that. It's so good. Anyway, this is the way our semifinals look. Uh, Gornich with a 1-3 loss to Bonneth. And then on the other side, we had uh, a 3-1 victory by True Touch over Terror. And that means that we do get to see that sort of uh, exciting third and fourth place match, but we get the finals. I think we were all waiting for it. We also get an interview with uh, our newest uh, victor. We had Bonathon earlier. Now it's time to hear uh, from True Touch on his island getaway uh, somewhere off the coast of Poland, which is a joke. But uh, welcome, True Touch. Congratulations. How do you feel? Hello, everyone. Well, uh, first of all, can you hear me? Yes. OK. Uh, so it feels, feels really good because like, uh, I've really not been, I wasn't able to practice because I've been looking for the practice all week and it's really impossible to find any terrains. So, <laughs> huge, huge, so huge thanks for Scan because like I've managed to play like seven games yesterday with him, four with Kogat and that was my old practice. So yeah, big shout outs to Scan for the two hours of practice for uh, yesterday. So that was a very, uh, very difficult series, but it felt like you were, like, when you knew that you could win, you really just, like, went for it. What did you expect when you uh, knew that you were playing against Terror? Because he can be really unpredictable. Did the series play out like you thought it would? Yeah, uh, I mean, like, Terror uh, usually, at least against Zerx, uh, cut the corner. So usually he either go for super greedy play or really all-in play. So I was expecting those two plays, and it was really that. Uh, the only the only way I confused myself was on the La Mancha because mm. I really misread misread that his he misread his build order. I was thinking that he was going for the mech play or one one one, and suddenly it's like what what the fuck? Why why is he playing for instant medics? But if I had one more sun, can maybe I would hold. But yeah, it was really great great play by him. Uh, wow. So, uh, I mean, when you, the, the one game that you kind of, uh, struggled, uh, against terror, what went wrong there that you didn't, you know, totally expect? Was it just like you didn't expect him to push exactly then? So you weren't totally prepared or what was it that like really caught you off guard? Well, basically when I saw the wall that he was going for the wall and I've seen like a couple of his previous game, I think every time he went for the mech. So he did a good preparation because he changed the strategy against me. But I wasn't look I, I was I wasn't paying attention to the gas probably. But I think I had a I had the his uh, gas in vision. Uh, so if I was able to see that second gas isn't ready I should just read that that is some marine and medic gas. But yeah, I didn't. I think he won. So you have made it to the finals again. You're going up against Bonneth. Are we going to see you take the title here? Are you going to be a four-time champion of BSL? What are your thoughts going Wait, into the finals? He's already won four times. Four, he's already won four times. Yeah. So he's going to be a five-time? Oh, yeah. We got to make a special. So, uh, yeah, GSL has this special five-times winner trophy. Um, so we got to make a BSL trophy that has, like, a five for the S in BSL or something. Like, like what's going on? What, what's going to happen? Can't. Kid, are, are you the Bonneth killer? Are you the kryptonite to Super Bonneth? What's going on here? Well, of course, it's it's the time to take what belongs to me, but... <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> but it's not going to be easy one. You know, guys, Bonneth is strong, but yeah. <laughs> Bonneth's got the trophy. Like, we're storing it at his house. True Chest is, like, breaking down the doors to take it back. Wow. Um... I, it's it's honestly incredible to watch you play. Uh, it's even more incredibler to watch you stream. So for all of your viewers and fans of the True Touch out there, what do you have to say in them, English or Polish, whatever? What do you have to say to your fans? 
Well, I would like to thank them, of course, for supporting me. Uh, I haven't been streaming lately so much uh, because I wanted to hide a bit my play. Uh, yeah, but thanks for all my viewers, all my fans for supporting me all the time. So you're basically planning to stream a lot after you win BSL, right? Well, right now, to be honest, I can stream all the week because we are like practicing with bonus like since month, like, I don't know, like thousands of games, like before the Corrupted Cup. So, you know, I know what he's going to do. He's no, he knows what I'm going to do. So it's going to be like game of mind games. Oof. Nothing, oh. to hi nothing to hide there. Well, as, as long as you guys keep scouting first magically every single game, then, uh, <laughs> you know, there really won't be anything to hide. Um, yeah. Wow. Super impressive to watch you play. I uh, was checking chat to see if they had any questions, and I didn't see any. So I'm safe this time. I'm not lying that I was going to look for ch questions in chat. Uh, you guys just dropped the ball. But get your questions ready for next week, and uh, we'll see what happens. We've got a third place match happening, and we're going to watch this guy uh, fly from his tropical island back to Poland to play in the grand finals of BSL uh, Season 9. So, of course, best of luck to you, True Touch, and I uh, look forward to seeing you uh, next week. Yeah, thank you. Uh, see you. See you next week. All bye right. Bye. Goodbye. Uh, that's going to do it for BSL tonight. Nyokin, did the games deliver? Yeah, they delivered. Gornich delivered in the first Ooh. game. They kind of fell apart in the last. Yeah. But this, the series was still good. True <laughs> Touch versus Terror was still good. Obviously, as a Terran player, I, I love the mind games coming in from the Terran, you know, I kind of hated the Elza Gamer base, but yeah. you know, happens, but yeah. Whatever. One thing I am sad about is that it's uh, 4.30 here in the- Oh yeah, it's still an hour until the yeah, subway Yeah, still opens. an hour and a half for me, so I gotta do something for an hour. But other than that, BSL was great, and we got the finals that I think the majority of people wanted. We're gonna oh, yeah. finally find out who's the better Polish player. Is it True Touch? Is it Bonneth? Is it Protoss? Is it Zerg? Of course it's not Terran, yeah. it's never Terran, but- I, w I wish that like this had happened like last season because then like maybe you make like a I don't know what kind of crazy bets we could make between the two players. I was going to try to goad them each into like, you know, some flamboyant overextension. But I'll have to do a better job of hosting this show. So uh, big thanks to everybody for tuning in. We only have one more time besides tonight where I can shill the BSL Patreon, patreon.com slash bombastic. So look appreciate it guys you may never hear these tiny advertisements again what happens if we go to like coffee or like i don't know kickstarter or something for bsl then you'll miss the patreon so get it while you can just like these guys did star lover striker andre strelkovsky tj suited or is that suited 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 okay never mind i can't read the english language cam check cam check moon tank spacewalk Ling and Pump and LML. Big thanks to those homies out there for continuing to support BSL. And of course, to everybody out there whose names I'm not allowed to read because they didn't pay us enough money, which is what it's all about in the end. Um, also, uh, big thanks to you Patreons, donors, subbers, whatever you are out there um, for continuing to support BSL. Uh, that's allowed us to upgrade to our 4K resolution camera that makes us way too pretty on screen. And of course, uh, to continue running BSL. We couldn't do it without you. Uh, also, my camera, I believe, is on single-digit battery life, so I'm going to go ahead and close this out as quickly as possible. Thanks to everyone behind the scenes, all the BSL staff, Zero, our tournament organizer and observer uh, and buyer of nice things for the stream. Uh, we've got uh, the, the subs. We had lots of great hosts tonight. We had lots of cool people in chat checking us out, and we hope to see you all back here again for the grand finals a BSL, which will be next week, so do not miss it. It'll be up on the Team Liquid calendar. You can put it on your calendar. You can write it on your mom's calendar in the kitchen, but make sure to come back once again for the grand finals of BSL Season 9 next week. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you there.